Good morning, everyone. Welcome. This is my second word camp. I'm very excited to be here and to speak to you about how we at NECC took a very outdated website with no budget, no support, and basically nothing, and migrated into WordPress. And the challenges that we had, um, but the victories we've also had too, because we had a lot of work to continue to do. So, um, during my presentation, if you have any questions, please you know feel free to ask them. Um, I will you know try my best to uh, give you a great answer. But how I usually start off is I talk about my background because I think it's important for you guys to understand where I've been in my career because um, I've done a lot of different um, jobs. The web and NECC, Northern Essex Community College, where I have um, worked in for about two and a half years. WordPress, yes, really WordPress using that. Rolling out WordPress as a CMS to the college. Launching the website. Now what do we do? And also some lessons learned. Well, my background is I have a BFA in painting and an MFA in painting and new media. So I am a fine arts person, um, first and foremost. But I got bitten by the technology bug way back in 1994, um, where I started doing video production and then also digitized media. And I've worked for many different companies, um, large corporations, small corporations, um, B2B, B2C. Um, also done freelance, and I've taught at UMass Lowell and also UMass College of Art. But I have not been uh, in the public sector and looking for a college until this position I took at NECC. Roles that I have done, as I said, fine artist, but I've also done graphic design, production manager, project manager, software manager, anything that you could you know ask if I've done. I haven't done a lot of coding now. I am not that technical, but I do um, call, call myself an expert in user experience and also creative direction. So prior to my arrival at uh, Northern Essex Community College, first generations of the websites, like many colleges, were done in static HTML. And with a community college, like lots of universities, you don't have a huge budget, so it was really, really hard to maintain. And what would end up happening was, and I kid you not, content would be duplicated two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times across the site. Um, forms for, say, immunizations would be here in one place and another place. Really, really hard to maintain. And then, of course, people would call and complain, like, I sent you the last document. Why isn't it up on the website? And it's like, it is. Oh, well, I didn't realize it was also in these other places. So it, it was really used as a um, repository or a filing cabinet, as I uh, like to um, describe it. There was also no online strategy and no cross communications between the other departments, which that's one of my uh, things that I will always stress is very, very important to have good communication and good strategic alignment with um, IT and marketing. Also, we had extreme um, time for doing edits. It was like three to five days to actually just edit times, um, dates, things like that. People were just upset. They were like, I can't understand. You know, my son does websites on the side. Why can't they you know, have you guys do this quicker? And it's like, well, when you're dealing with 900, 1,000 pages, 1,500 documents, it can be kind of difficult. But what was always really great, which I never really experienced until I got to the college, was I would get sent a calendar to update, put up as a PDF. Then about 10 minutes later, I would get the same PDF. Oh, we found a mistake. Okay, so let me go update it again. Oh, wait, we found another mistake. Okay, yeah. And this, I'm, I'm not kidding you, it would be my day. Then there was also, if you can imagine, if I was dissatisfied looking and trying to manage this website, what the users were actually experiencing. Everyone up to the president of the college was frustrated with the website. And the website, I was told before I came there, had been, of course, the laughing stock of the entire college. The president, even during one of his um, presentations, mentioned, well, it's up on the website, so good luck on <laughs> My boss wasn't really too pleased with that. <laughs> and, 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 I'll, let me, and I'll back up too. My boss, who is the VP of um, marketing communications, he is not a technical guy at all. And he never coined himself as 
He's just doing the best that he can. Mark and Mary T. did not do joint planning, as I mentioned. And they didn't even know how to communicate or speak to one another or communicate what they needed to have. I mean, as many of you guys probably know in your experience, you know, Mark and I kind of are in silos. But it's really important to have that cross communication. So we need to have people, you know, ask them for their advice. What's the best way to go forward with this? I mean, I, I look to IT to tell me that. Um, I might have an idea, but I'm not the expert for sure. We had a new CIO who started at the college, and he had used WordPress at um, his previous college at North Shore Community College, but mainly as a blogging software. Um, so he was kind of like, you know, Hannah, maybe you want to look into this. And I'm like, huh, you know, hey, I'm up for anything, especially when I had no budget, really. Um, and the college knew it had to do something. They weren't sure what, but they knew they needed to do something about the website. And they needed someone to bridge the gap between marketing and IT and MIS. You know, so basically, they created a new role and they hired me as director of online communications. So, once I got there, you know, we had to start shifting goal, you know, shifting our gears and figure out what are the goals that we need to have. And we kind of think outside the box. You know, their goals were set. We wanted to have um, distributed publishing. You know, so content experts could be making the edits to the pages. Um, really, I don't know when the financial aid deadline is um, at all. And if it is changed or if it's switched, it would be nice to have a financial aid director be able to make that edit herself. We also wanted to replace the functionality and creative with the outdated public website. I mean, when I remember applying to NACC, I was like, I, I don't even know if I wanted to uh, go for this position. It was just very outdated and it was just a, a kind of a mess. We also wanted to separate faculty um, and staff in front of that, or, you know, their site from the public site, um, because what had happened was they kind of made the site everything to everyone, and that is good in theory, but it was just a mess. Um, and we also wanted to implement a, um, a system for faculty web pages as well, so the faculty, faculty actually had their own websites. Remember. As I mentioned, community college, you know, limited staff, very limited budget. One full-time person in marketing, which was me, half-time person in MIS, who was a developer. Had some money for migration for uh, getting some content people in to copy and paste these, uh, this website over for us, but there was a staggering amount of content to manage. 900 plus pages, 1,200 plus team assets. WordPress, are you nuts? These were things that were actually said to me. Really? Isn't WordPress just blogging? You know, no one uses it real for real websites. You know, maybe maybe a mom and pop shop or something. And who knows how they use it here? You know, we've always used Dreamweaver. We, you know, we do things this way. The question back was, you guys have a better idea? I mean, I had worked with enterprise content management systems before, but we also I knew that we didn't have fifty thousand dollars a year for a license at all. What do we have to lose? I mean, what do we have to lose? That was what I went back to um, all the naysayers and said, you know, let's let's take a chance. WordPress, yes, really. So the decision was made based on examples from small businesses and nonprofit sectors. And we have the expertise internally for the design, the user experience, and the PHP development. But we really did not know what we were getting into. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, Bill Dennon, who's here from Wheaton College, who was um, mentioned in his um, site showcase last time, we had seen him at WordCamp um, last year. And uh, we were like, oh my goodness, there's another college that's using WordPress. Let's see what we can do about it. Um, <laughs> so we had a couple conversations by email to make sure we were going, hopefully going on the right way. Uh, we contracted a Linux administrator to do the back end um, server magic and hired content migrators to cleanse the content. Um, and we had three people who worked for a couple months just copying and pasting it on the content over. What we had used, um, we didn't build our theme from scratch. We used the uh, I'm not going to pronounce it right, Auto Wapa theme uh, as a point of departure um, in a basis. It was basically a nice clean, plain theme, um, and I was told, you know, oh, we'll just use this and we'll, you know, bridge off from there. Okay, fine. Um, we've integrated in about 20 plugins. Um, a lot of them, what Jay, if you were here at the uh, last um, 
presentation, he had highlighted, and one of my favorite ones is that media replace. If I didn't have that, I don't know what I would do. Um, but we also, one of the other key things we did was we integrated our LDAP, which is um, Active Directory user IDs for the editors in there to have some kind of um, some, some security measures put into place. And it was funny because it was difficult to convince our IT networking folks that this was the way to go because they were in Microsoft. I and mean, they are still mainly a Microsoft-based house. Um, but when we were able to tell them, you know, we can integrate this with LDAP, it's like, okay, sounds good to me. And we constructed about 10 different um, templates, um, some for design layout, some for functionality. Uh, it was difficult because with limited resources and having to manage not only this redesign, but also keeping the current website updated and making sure that if we were updating something on the new site or putting something new on the new site, it's on the old site. It was difficult. And you know, looking back uh, for the template development, we didn't necessarily do it the, I want to say the smartest way, but we did it the way that we only knew how to. And so we're kind of going back now and revisiting that. Yeah. Separate. It was separate templates, so we did not use child um, child uh, templates for that. But again, it was kind of um, when I looked, and I, and again, I looked to our development developer, and I said, "What do you think is the best way of going forward for him?" Because he was also managing um, something called Blackboard, which they use for distance learning. He was like, yeah, "I don't really have the time to really think this through. Let's just move this way." And I was like, "You know what? I'm fine with that, um, as long as it works." Um, and again, a little sloppy, but. It got us where we need to go. One of the pitfalls that we uh, we did fall into, um, I unfortunately listened to my CIO, <laughs> which usually is a good thing. Um, and I have a really great relationship with him. I mean, he is the most awesome guy, you know, technically I've really worked with. But he convinced us to go with a single install of WordPress, not a request to the user, um, <laughs> which delayed us launching our website. Uh, two times, uh, major, major failures with launching, uh, mainly because it was too huge of a site. We had too many pages. Um, the caching system was just not, it just didn't work for us. And it was funny because if anything, you know, that we learned from this, it's like you go with your gut instinct. It's, he had done a few WordPress installs and he was like, you know what, let's go with a single install because the plugins are most up to date. We, we know this. And it was before we knew that um, WordPress was going to kind of merge together. So he still, I still give him a crap about that. <laughs> so rolling out WordPress to the college, defining roles for editing the site. You know, what should we have content experts, you know, have access to? Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we were going to empower people and want them to use the editing system and not email me and saying we have this page, we need to change this, this, and this on. To me, by the time that someone would actually um, send me an email, they could have done it themselves with the right training. Um, so basically, we wanted to make sure that they could just replace the content or um, document that they already had access to. They can replace a document, you know, um, and that online communications and power users and marketing communications could create the new pages, new posts, and add new documents. Even with the simplest instructions, we've run into some issues. Um, just because people don't read, or they go, well, I think we should do it this way. Well, I can see how I updated here. So, um, you know, we kind of were hoping to make it a little bit more broader and even have some power users outside of marketing communications. And it's kind of, I've had a real back end. Um, but what we did do was, a couple of weeks before we launched, we you know, brought the extended editors together. I sent out, you know, maybe 10 different times in training sessions and tried to group them um, via, you know, um, subject matter. So financial aid and enrollment services were all at one time together. Um, somebody in the program section would be in here. And so they were all being with groups. And so they could kind of see their, see their content, be able to edit and touch their content. And they had definitely had a better connection um, to using WordPress then. So we did that a couple of weeks before the launch, and then we also, you know, I keep up with, you know, checking in with people, and I'm always available to help people out with that. So we launched. We launched the website about a year and a month ago. Redesign took about 13 months, and it was pretty painful. A lot of times people didn't believe that I still showed up to work. Um, 
like glutton for punishment, what can I say? I like to, you know, set a goal and make it happen. Um, but the site was received extremely well. Create, you know, the creativity of it, functionality, the content. Um, and the extended editors were really thrilled with being able to do their own editing, replace a document when they found out that their VP gave them the wrong information. And, oh, if I just saw this, we would change this. Not having to wait a couple days for it to turn around. And also, um, the website won a silver, silver medal award um, at the NCMPR um, conference, which is a marketing communication organization for community colleges and technical colleges. Um, and it was the first award that the website had won um, since my boss had been there for about 15 years. So he was pretty pleased. I won the gold. I will get it next year. <laughs> anyway, so what are the next steps for uh, our public website? Um, we're migrating into WordPress 3. Um, that is first and foremost. And we, it's been taking some time to be doing that. Um, again, not only do we have the public sites to manage, but I'm also managing um, development of the portal, global sites, all that great stuff. And of course, you know, these little micro sites that get um, also sprung on you. Um, Oh, by the way, we're launching a new program. We need a website up tomorrow. <laughs> that doesn't sound familiar to anybody, does it? I hope not. <laughs> um, we've also started to do some usability testing. Actually, we just con um, concluded some um, with a company called Above the Fold, which is located in Boston. Um, we had um, them come out and talk with us, interview us, and did some usability testing to ensure that um, prospects could find information um, with a few tasks and also current students as well. Uh, one thing that was kind of interesting when we did do the redesign, because the website had been so stale for so long, um, the people who complained mostly about could not being able to find things weren't necessarily our students, it was our own staff. Um, and if it, wasn't right there under something called quick links, which I got rid of. Um, I was like, we can just pull these things in the right places. You know, there it was outrage. You know, these people can't find financial aid information. So we decided to do some usability testing, and people could find the information. So um, and we're now doing the refinement of the creativity and also the functionality. Um, you know, we, we use WordPress. Um, not to the fullest benefit, um, but we used it to get us out of a sticky situation. And we're really excited to keep moving forward with it. Um, it is really exciting. So what else is next on top since I have done this redesign? Well, using WordPress as a CMS has allowed you know, strategic online projects to be fast-tracked, as I call them. Um, we've done some social media launching, and um, we're going to be doing location-based um, engagement. We're going to be launching an optimized mobile site in the next couple of weeks, um, which I'm extremely excited about, um, though I was told that um, our students don't use mobile phones, which I know they do. <laughs> We're also going to, sorry, I'll keep my political comments to myself. Um, we're also going to be launching a mobile app as well um, for current students. Um, because what do students want? They want to be able to find the information they need quickly on their phone. Also, we're going to be doing a portal that we're going to be launching next um, you know, January or so. We're just supposed to, we're supposed to have a soft launch for the end of August, but that didn't happen. But of course, always continuous improvement on the public site. So some key takeaways. There will be naysayers. They love to try to burst your bubble, but let me tell you, you can do it. I, you know, I showed them we can do it. Go with your gut. Um, you have to. I, I'm a big believer in you know, going with your heart, or going with your heart, but going with your gut also as well. It's very important. Ask for help. Um, there's a bunch of really great resources out there. As I said, um, we connected with the Wheaton College group, and then, thank goodness because really, um, I spent a lot of nights crying at home in a pillow because I didn't know what I got myself into. One other thing too, not only as good as your team, I would not be here today. And unfortunately, my developer and designer are not here today because they're both in separate Fridays. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And them believing in me and also working very well as a team. I mean, it's amazing when you have a good team together how great synergy happens. I have a full-time designer. I also have a full-time path developer, I call him. He doesn't um, work for me, but he works for um, our CIO. But 
I really manage his clinic. And we have a work study also. Um, they feel that, okay, yeah, sure, we should have a work study you know, if we want to create some content and do some editing. But the good news is that um, with the success and what people are realizing with the um, new website is that we have to maintain it. And we are now going to have a web specialist and also an online um, marketing specialist start in the next couple of weeks. You also need your key support from your CIO, your VP of marketing, and I, I, any anybody else within the college um, you know, community. Managing extended editors. Every page should have a main editor and a backup editor. You want to make sure someone's responsible for that content. Offer training early and often. Um, you know, I'm always available, and I tell people if I don't get back to them within three days, to call me or email me again. Not, you know, I, I want people to want to contact me and connect with me so I can help them do their job easily. Develop a cheat sheet or, say, a microsite with all the information on it because if people have a list, then it's always a good thing for people so they can refer back to it and also keep it simple, always. I want to open it up, up to questions. Um, my information is up here, and I will be doing a slide share with this so you'll be able to see this information too. My personal email address is anna.arnold at comcast.net and then hrnold at necc.mass.edu. You also can follow me on Twitter and on the net. So, would like to open up for questions? Yes? Uh, what do you use for faculty staff retention? We're using WordPress, um, another installed WordPress for that. And with the faculty and staff um, site, I am not as um, uh, much of a uh, police on that. If somebody wants to upload 800 documents, the same one, and they can't find it, that's, you know, and I, I've kind of given that dis disclosure also as well. There's certain things like with um, academic calendars that I keep a close eye on, but they end up, you know, duplicating um, a presentation five times up there because there's a typo. And, yeah. and how do you access one? Is it just people want It is large, yeah. Log in by username, and also I've broken people up into groups as well. So I have one, say, for uh, administration and finance um, using Role Scoper. Um, that's helped me be able to really kind of keep control. And I have a master list back in my office. And people, um, in order to become an editor, they just need to contact me, and I kind of give them the, you know, here's your, you know, information sign here. Yes, you're not going to do anything, you know, bad. One of the yes. What I'm sorry? What kind of traffic? Oh, traffic of see. <laughs> right now, we average about fifty thousand a month. Um, and so I mean, it, it's okay. Um, we can do a better job. I mean, really, to be honest, my big thing was they wanted to get someone in there and then design the website. Now, what we're doing is actually driving people and doing internal um, campaigns and also um, kind of cross well cross marketing um, with brochures and QR tags. So. Yeah, um, we have somebody that we contract with to um, make sure with the servers because I am not technical and our IT staff do not have the expertise in house. So we have somebody that we work with on that. And unfortunately, we did, unfortunately they did not have analytics installed on the prior um, with the static site, so we couldn't do any big comparisons from there to now. Mm -hmm. yes. I just want to recommend that if you want to be heard by the speaker and by everyone else, you could walk up to the microphone and ask your question. Oh, yes. You said you used content migrators in order yes. to... Tell me more about that. Who were they? They were people that we contracted out from um, uh, an order, you know, a temp place. Um, and basically, we asked them to have basic skills of, you know, being able to copy and paste some HTML skills. And so what we did was, um, you know, we did some interviewing. We got a few people that we thought were, were good, good eggs. Um, and also, you know, gave them a plan. This is what you need to do for this page. You know, the, the section just goes from tip to tat over there. Um, this page, well, you know what, we're going to kind of reorganize the information a little bit more and also make sure that you add in your keywords, your um, SEO, all that good stuff there. Um, and it was a very long in terms of process. And it was funny because my boss had asked me, can't we just outsource the entire project? You know, it was very difficult to manage the content migrators. Um, 
And when I say difficult, it just, it, it was labor intensive. Um, and so you just had to kind of keep on top of them. Ideally, it would be done all internally. Yes? But the question was, do I have a, pro um, a process for approvals for um, people, for new editors to come in, or just in general with the, um, people making the edits? Well, in general, since you have, well, like you have access to edit the website. Okay, um, so who has access to edit the website? Usually you have these um, recommended by the, I want to call it the content owner, say for instance, if it's um, within student life, you know, you are, the Dean of Student Life would contact me or somebody at director level and whatnot. They would um, basically connect with me. And to me, it's like if you can do email and you can do certain ta basic tasks, you can also do WordPress. So I would sit there and I would train them and go, this is what you're doing. You have access A, B, and C. That's it. And with Scoper, you can actually assign um, pages and sections to certain groups. So. I would, I mean, I have global use, but you might not have access if you're in athletics to edit program information. So that's how we basically have managed that. Okay. Yes? Well, kind of the same question, but maybe more quantitative. Can you give us some statistics on how many extended editors, how many pages? Yep. It's great, great um, question. We have about um, 100 um, extended editors. Um, I would say within the 100 extended editors, they, and I say that's who we have logged in and they have accounts. I would say we probably have about 30 active, and when I say active, people who take care of their content on a daily basis. Um, and I would say within their average person, our group probably manages 10 to uh, 5 to maybe 15 pages. Um, not a whole lot. Yes? Um, you mentioned that you worked with the company about the fold for yes. your research. Now, what are you doing now to say, Go back to your boss and say, "Here's how we're doing. Are you measuring feedback? Do you have plans to, you know, improve and work with the Buffalo Bulls again to say, here's what we did right and how?" Yes, absolutely. Um, great question. A lot of it is proofs in the pudding, and I'm all about statistics. Even though I am a fine arts uh, person, um, first and foremost, if you can prove to people that they're going and you're spending, um, say, 100 nights of their time on these top 20 tasks or these top 20 pages, that's where you put your effort in and those are where the highly visible um, pages need to be. And so we have, um, we're going to be having an ongoing relationship with Above the Fold and if you'd like I can give you the information too with them because they are fabulous um, and I, I, you know, it was kind of a fluke that we connected um, but I'm really glad that we did. Yes? In terms of the decision making, it sounds like it was kind of a dire situation where everyone recognized that the situation was really bad. Aside from that, are there any like the top two or three factors that drove uh, the decision to, to go ahead and do a complete renovation? Would it be you know, the fact that staff were frustrated with the time lag or, or what? What would, what would you say? Well, um, with, there was a number of factors that put us into going with WordPress open source and um, also the you know, being free and not having a huge um, investment that cost it in the end to it. Um, we knew we wanted to have distri um, distributed publishing, um, and we also wanted to have it so it was as easy for somebody who had basic HTML skills um, to do some, to maybe even a little bit more complex, but also for, say, the admin assistant who um, knew how to use email. It, we wanted to make sure that it was easy enough, um, and it was kind of a dire situation. Um, and Looking back, would I go with WordPress again? Absolutely. Um, no, no doubt in my mind with it. Um, but you, you need to make sure that you do proper training um, with people. And as I said, train early and often. And usually I keep my sessions about a half an hour max and um, just because people can't digest that much information. And the more they get to do it, the better that they become and the more confident. Um, I found a lot, out a lot of people were very afraid to even um, open up the, the site um, or the back end. And it's like, guys, what's the worst thing that happens? You delete a page? So what? You make a new one. It, it's okay. Um, and I think that giving um, people that sense that 
it is okay if they make a mistake. I mean, I'm the first person that says, you know what, I'm lucky if I have the same shoes on in the morning because I, you know, I'm, I'm a goofball. I can't remember anything. You just have to let people know that, hey, what's the worst thing that can really happen? You know, I mean, it's, you know, we, we put the safeguards in place so bad, bad things would not happen. I hope that answered your question. Okay. Yes? Um, what do you use for content management, specifically if you just need to upload documents and things like that for download that probably more than staff faculty? Do you have a bigger plugin that you use? It would be the replace on content, or I think replace media uh, plugin that Jay was uh, talking about. That is the one that we use. Um, for, we, we love that there. It's interesting with the faculty and staff one. Um, again, we've had some staff members who have uploaded the same document 10 different times because they didn't realize that it was actually going through there. And usually, um, you know, I do, get a little, I do get frustrated because I'm like, oh, come on, people, you've been using this for, you know, a couple of months or even a year. Usually a phone call to them and an email back saying, oh, you know what, we noticed in the database that you had two different copies. You know, let me come over and just work with you again. Just, you know, make sure we go through this the right way. And they're mostly, you know, they're usually very appreciative. We've also set up guidelines, too, for um, file names. And also we have a maximum of two megs that can be uploaded by anyone. Anything higher than two megs has to come through me and then get uploaded by an IS. So we have about three more minutes. Um, if there's any other guests, questions, please. You had mentioned Place video funnel plugins. What other plugins have you found absolutely necessary? We um, SEO all in one pack is something that we absolutely we love, and also WP Super Cache. Um, I wish my developer and uh, my designer were here because they keep a very very tight rein on that. And to be honest, I wish I knew all that we did in use because we've had some really great things. But the thing is with also plugins, and I'll say this um, maybe as a final um, point, plugins are awesome. However, they're kind of like, you think of it this way, if you're building a car, you know, you might have a part with a plugin from a Toyota and one from a Volkswagen and one from, I don't know, a Neon or a Yugo or something like that. They, in theory, could work together but they might not be the best fit together. And so I also um, encourage people to develop plugins on their own, especially if they have specific needs um, for their site, um, maybe based on some of the best practice, you know, best plugins out there. Um, because we did find a number of um, plugins that were not compatible and caused some frustration. So, but you do have to remember, the plugins are great, but sometimes they just don't all work together. Well, thank you very much. I will be um, in the expert zone at 3.30, um, so if anyone needs to talk to me or, you know, come find me, tweet me, or anything like that. Okay, thank you.